Great. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Um, Patrick and I are very excited to talk to you about uh, exciting new product that uh, Supermicro and NVIDIA developed together. We're close development partners. And um, it's based on a DPU from NVIDIA called Bluefield, which is an ARM CPU-based system. And actually, it outperforms x86-based systems in the same area of storage AI offload, or work workloads. So how many of you out there have teenage sons at home? The reason I'm asking is because like teenage boys, GPUs are always hungry. But instead of being hungry for what's in your refrigerator, GPUs are hungry for data. The chart on the left here shows that CPU data sets are typically measured in gigabytes, but GPU chipsets or data sets are measured in terabytes or even petabytes. This is because, as you know, um, CPUs have tens of cores, but GPUs have tens of thousands of cores, processing cores. So to go back to our food analogy, it's like the difference between feeding a small family and feeding the whole OCP attendance at lunchtime. It's an order of magnitude difference. Another challenge to AI storage workloads is on the right side. So typically, a CPU, a CPU application is connected to 10 or maybe, hopefully, 25 gig. So the time it takes to load the data set, you know, gigabyte data set or multi-gigabyte data set, compared to the time it takes for the CPU to crunch, for those tens of cores to crunch on whatever the, the, um, the program is doing, and then spit out the answers or load the next data set is pretty proportion or pretty lines up pretty well synchronizes pretty well for the amount of compute time but if you look at a gpu io cycle you see that 25 gig takes a long time to load those bigger much bigger data sets and so that cpu is sitting there idling once it gets the data it can it does its uh, number crunching or whatever the whatever the workload is very quickly but then it's also waiting again to put the data back into um, the, the storage systems. So the easy solution, obviously, is to just increase the performance. And the product that um, Patrick is going to go into details about has eight 200 gig ports on it, so 1,600 gigabytes of bandwidth. And these challenges aren't going to get easier. Uh, on the left, the chart on the left shows the number of parameters um, that go into uh, uh, an workload, uh, an AI workload, starts out maybe five-ish years ago, I think, is when this chart began, at um, tens of millions of parameters. And today, five years later or so, it's over a trillion. And as you can see, the chart continues to go up to the right. So this is training. Everybody knows training takes a lot of data and a lot of bandwidth, but inferencing as well. Um, RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation, RAG for short, and luckily um, there's an acronym for that. Lots of acronyms in our business, and in this case it's needed. Um, and I'm not going to go into the detail. This is the sort of the data flow. It's very complicated, and it would take a lot of time. But the important things to note are two. One is that First of all, what RAG does is it's basically like a fact checker and an access control mechanism for large language models because when you're doing inferencing, you lose when the large language model is trained who should have access to the different information. And also that data that's in the large language model can get out of uh, date very easily. So, you know, think about like uh, support scores or um, products and new products in an, in an ordering system, those sort of things. So RAG takes care of that. It sort of makes everything relevant. And it does that by using a vector database and takes all the queries and checks them and puts the updated queried information in that database and it keeps growing and growing and growing. 
So lots of performance needed even on the inferencing side. And of course, it's latency sensitive because you're interfacing with people that are at putting in queries. But you also could be interfacing with computers. Scary thought, but computers training computers. And so latency is super important here. And you're going to see that the product we're going to talk about has extremely low latency. So Bluefield DPU, it's we're talking about here on the, the, the solutions on the far right on, in the JBoth. But it actually um, has application all up and down the storage data path. Um, it can be in the front end. It can actually even be in the client side. And in the interest of time, we only have um, 20 minutes here. I'm going to skip all those details and just point out that we're focusing on the far right. This is a quick overview of what a DPU does or looks like. This happens to be the Bluefield DPU from NVIDIA, but most of them have similar capabilities. Has a, in the case of Bluefield, a 16 core A78 ARM technology CPU. Um, has a lot of hardware offloads. I'll go into them in a minute, but those hardware offloads um, uh, pro or work on anything that's CPU cycle intensive and latency sensitive. And on the I.O., it has a built-in Gen 5 PCI switch and uh, two 400 gig Ethernet or InfiniBand ports. For anybody that doesn't know, InfiniBand is a networking technology that came out of HPC and is very widely used in AI networking. And then the SDK, the, the programming framework. This is like um, CUDA is for GPUs. It's a programming framework that makes sure that any programs that are written for DPUs today will run on DPUs in the future. So looking in a little bit more detail, this is the um, diagram on the left is an XCDA6 version of the solution we're talking about. And on the right is the DPU solution. You can see the simplicity so you can understand easily that there's much better power um, on the right side, less power on the right side. And surprisingly, and I'll show you why in the next slide, the performance is more. So the DPUs are built with much less processing power than x86, of course, but they have a lot of offloads focused on the different markets they're targeted at. And in this case, I'm going to talk about an offload that's focused on JBOFs or any storage appliance. And what it does is it takes, it converts NVMe to NVMe over fabrics totally in hardware without any interaction with the ARM processor, with the exception of taking care of of problems or loading the mapping tables versus the right side where you have an x86 processor. And that processor is a general purpose processor. It's designed for anything from laptops to high-end servers. And basically all it's doing is converting NVMe to NVMe over fabric. So really uh, quite an overkill. Still very performant as you can see. But notice the difference in performance when you are doing everything in hardware. And very mo most interesting is this. CPU utilization for the x86 is about 50%. CPU utilization for the ARM processor, not even measurable. So that means that ARM processor is still there to add all kinds of special features. And in the case of this platform, which also has the capability to add GPUs, you have the ability to add some of the new innovation occurring where we're finding that moving some of the AI data or workload onto the storage is very advantageous to performance improvements, especially, for example, in RAG. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Patrick to go into more details on the actual um, product itself. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Uh, great, great afternoon, everyone. My name is Patrick Chu from Supermicros. Uh, from Supermicro's point of view, we do see uh, four major challenges from the new AI uh, large-scale AI data centers. The first one is the data size is growing. I think Rob just mentioned the data size uh, parameters uh, keep growing. And the second one is uh, mixed workload. The, the LLM data uh, pipeline, including the mixed uh, sequential read, sequential write, uh, random read, random write, and uh, small and large different uh, I.O. size, is caused a lot of the uh, storage challenging. The third one is the demand on the performance. As Sir Rob mentioned, that, that we, we need to continue feeding the uh, GPU uh, high test performance, uh, let them do the uh, analysis or uh, uh, data crunching. You cannot kind of hold your data and uh, delay the GPU process. The final one is the high power consumption. 
everyone know recently the both the GPU and the uh, CPU or any compute is consume more and more power. How did you control the power con power budgets in your data center? Is the most challenging uh, in the data centers. So today we are very exciting to partner with NVIDIA and launch this uh, PCIe Gen 5 JBOF. And uh, we have a very flexible uh, design. The first one, we can support uh, up to the 36 E3 DAS SSD, or we can support the 24 U.2. And uh, we can support both a single or dual pole NVMe SSD with the Gen 5 NVMe SSD uh, meet a different requirement. On the right hand side, you can see in the real side, we can support uh, up to uh, two blue fields free in one canister and also can support the one GPU. If the, your GPU is L4, the single width, so you can put the two blue field and the one L4 GPU. If you are using the double width GPU, you will use the one blue field and the one uh, GPU. And uh, on the other hand, we also support a, a two canister in this uh, design. You can use this HA and uh, do the failover, or you can use a tree, this as a twin node and uh, support uh, uh, your workload uh, data expansions. So Rob talked about the performance. Uh, let's take a look at the, uh, our internal testing performance comparison. The first, uh, we talk about the bandwidth. Um, on the top system, uh, top gra uh, graphic, we are showing the traditional legacy uh, JBOF architecture with the x86 host uh, as an initiator and the user x86 base as a JBOF target. On the bottom is our new solution. We changed the x86 JBOF to the Bluefield 3 uh, JBOF target. So compared with uh, both uh, these architectures, both of them can saturate the 400 gig uh, in here, and the traditional will be the CX7. Uh, in the new JBOF uh, solution will be the Bluefield 3. We also compare with the latency. We found out that the latency is uh, roughly 10 to 15% better because the data, you can access the Bluefield and uh, go, uh, access the PLX to the SSD directly. But in the traditional, you need to go to the CPU, you need to go to DRAM and the back, back to the CPU and then go to the SSD. With this shorten the, the code pass, uh, we found out you have a better latency compared with the legacy architectures. The next one is the power consumption comparisons. With the top, basically you will have uh, 200, more than 200 watt CPU and uh, you have uh, more than 100 watts uh, DRAMs and the plus the CX7. But uh, in the button, you will have uh, one blue field and the PRX, PRX uh, consume maybe 40, 50 watt uh, the power consumptions. So the subsistence, you can see, one is uh, more than 400 watt, the other is less than 200 watt. You can save the 200 watt per subsistence across uh, the SSD or uh, fence, uh, those uh, power consumptions are identical. So each system, you can s save almost uh, 200 watt and uh, you, if you're thinking about your data center, have, uh, uh, have a racks of the storage, and also with these solutions, uh, you can save lots of the power uh, in your data centers, and uh, still provide you the best performance and the low latency. So with uh, this uh, brand new PCIe Gen 5 JBOF uh, plus the NVIDIA uh, Bluefields integrations, we can see, we can summarize uh, several major uh, benefits. First, Right now, the SSD we can have. You, you guys can see we have the 60 terabyte. If a 24 uh, U.2, you can more than one petabyte in the E3 form factors. And the right now, it's 30 terabyte. Down the road, they will have a more fender release the 60 terabyte. So pretty much, you can reach more than two petabyte in two U space. And uh, it's, it can be very flexible to support the different uh, storage media. You have the single port. You have a dual port. You have a U.2. You have the e EDSF and you have a uh, TLC, you have a QLC, right? You can use the different media to meet your workload. And uh, the other is the superior performance. We just uh, show the performance benchmark. We are easily to saturate the 400 gig bandwidth. If you need more performance, you can put uh, uh, two blue field in per canister, total four blue field in kind of a uh, two U uh, system. Of course, uh, you can add a GPU to do the local indexing or uh, searchings. The final one is power efficient. I just mentioned each system you can set, uh, save almost uh, 200 watt. And, uh, and uh, if you talk about racks of the uh, your large data centers, you are definitely save a lot of the powers uh, in these uh, total new solutions. So this is a brand new uh, solutions, and uh, uh, we would like to. Uh, invite more ecosystems, uh, software partners, uh, hardware partners to work together to build the, uh, the, the new ecosystem for this uh, 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 Gen 5 Bluefield uh, JBOF, and uh, can we can continue to grow the, the whole uh, use case and the solution for this uh, uh, new uh, Bluefield 
and the JBOF. Uh, this uh, system is available now. It's a showcase in the Super Michael's uh, booth. And uh, please uh, reach out to us if any questions or any thoughts. All right. Thank you.